I'm Dr. Maria Rodriguez, and this is my story. Both of my parents are Dominican. My mom came to the United States in the 60s after the president was overthrown. My grandfather worked for the president. Once he found out that the president was murdered, he went home, picked up whoever was there in the home, got on a plane and flew to the United States. My mother's sister didn't have that luck, so she was actually murdered. My father was on the other end. His family um, opposed the government. They rallied against the government. So once the president knew that they were against the government, they attempted to kill everyone in the family. So my grandfather on my father's side changed our last names to Rodriguez, so technically I am supposed to be Maldonado as opposed to Rodriguez. There were only one family member that still has that name, my father's sister. Fast forward now to my parents living in the United States. They get married, they have children, and then they get divorced. I'm two years old. My father decides to ship us off, my brother and I, to the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican Republic, my brother and I different people coming in through our lives. My grandmother, she spent some time with us, but eventually she left. My father would come and visit. So growing up in the Dominican Republic was actually pretty difficult and challenging because I felt very alone. I didn't have a mom. No one talked to me about my mom, didn't have that connection. My father, he would come visit and then he would leave. It was very challenging to make friends as well. Eventually my father, gets married, she has two kids, and the, with the first child, I was in absolute joy because now I felt like I wasn't gonna be alone anymore. Fast forward, my mom one day decides to show up, says, hey, I'm your mom, do you wanna come with me to New Jersey? In the United States, brand new country, brand new language, which represented new challenges, learning a brand new culture, integrating in a new family. My mom, to me, she was a stranger. Her husband was a stranger. My sisters, my two new sisters, were strangers to me as well. From nine to now, I have experienced so many different challenges in terms of racism and sexism. And racism were a big part of me growing up. I would go to school and I had my lunch, and one of the girls said, oh, hey, um, I'm so hungry. Can you give me some of your lunch? And I sat there and said, you know what? I can probably give you some of my lunch if you and your friends become my friend. She said, okay. So the next day when I was getting bullied and being called names and this girl stood up and said, no, 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 she's my friend, that's okay. So that kept reminding me of my skin color and the challenges that I would have. I meet with my school counselor who says, do you want to go to college? Yes, of course, why wouldn't I want to go to college? College is not for everybody. Okay, but why wouldn't it be for me? So I pursue that on my own. I applied to several colleges and I actually ended up getting accepted into different colleges. I was part of a program, EOF, Educationally Opportunity Fund, who provided financial assistance to people who didn't have the resources or the means and were academically disadvantaged as well. I had stayed after class packing my things. The professor was talking to a group of students, maybe two or three, telling them, oh, you know what? You know who I don't like is those EOS students. They are entitled. They come to school free and they think that we owe them something. And I woke up to the professor, I'm sorry, did I offend you in any way? No. Well, do you know that I'm an EOS student? Oh, well, you are the exception. Oh, I felt that he was being racist. I ended up being the only female. Every other woman had dropped out of the class. That became to me a challenge. But I also had a lot of people who were amazing and who taught me and saw something beyond what I could see. There were moments in which I had so many insecurities and lacked structure in my life. So people would know these small things. Well, Maria, you can do this and you're great at this and encourage me. I developed girl talk because 
Sometimes we lack that communication with our parents and sometimes it's just embarrassing to talk to our parents about certain things. The parents that I work with a lot is that there's also the disconnect that parents are separating from their kids and now parents reunite with their kids after months or years and parents expect the child just to have love and the child's like, well, you are a stranger. I grew up feeling depressed, lonely, and that pain of being desolate goes deep. Difficult to see kids who at six and seven are struggling with depression and anxiety. I like to look at failure as part of life. I have failed in many, many situations. In college, for example, I couldn't pass basic math. I took basic math six times. I failed my basic writing class. I have failed friends. I have failed in relationships. But if we just take them as that we are failures, then we stay stuck. You have to find something in you that makes you unique and make that prosperous and believe in yourself. What keeps me going is the ability to give back. My entire purpose or the purpose of these centers is to elevate the families, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I do travel to the Dominican Republic twice a year or three times, however many times I can, to visit those areas in the Dominican Republic that they're impoverished so I can give back. Currently I'm working with an organization that helps children who are disabled. Recently I received a text message from one of the parents that one of the kids who I saw, he was having surgery, he wasn't wa walking, now he's actually walking or learning how to walk again. So that is what drives me and motivates me to give back and elevate those families who need it the most.